Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to the F1 2020 Driver Career Mode with Williams Racing. And just before we get into this episode guys, if you're enjoying the series, make sure you smash that like button, click subscribe and the bell icon so that you're notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. And let's get stuck in to the first Dutch Grand Prix in Formula 1. So again, overviewing the upgrades and the engine condition and gearbox condition for this weekend. Gearbox is looking absolutely fine. You can't complain with the Mercedes gearbox in terms of durability. We haven't done, well, we've done one durability upgrade on the gearbox and I've got to say it's lasting extremely well and we're not going to have any issues getting through the six races required with that gearbox. You can see we have actually gone for a, power, a powertrain upgrade as well. That's on the way. And the reason I've done that is just to try to keep up with the top running Mercedes teams they seem to have made a little bit of a leap in terms of performance on that powertrain so I just wanted to get the first powertrain upgrade on the on the board for us and you can see in terms of aero we've done all we can in terms of minor upgrades we've got some major upgrades to come and it's pretty much the same story with chassis we've got a couple more um, weight redistribution and tire wear upgrades we can do before we need to start uh, smashing through the major upgrades in the chassis department but first of all, I am going to be uh, focusing on that chassis department in terms of major upgrades. You'll see that in the later episodes, but just because we're falling a bit behind in terms of chassis rather than the aero. But today, it is time for the Dutch Grand Prix at the Circuit Zandvoort, and it's time for qualifying. And it couldn't be more perfect conditions for a good qualifying session here in the Netherlands. And we're going to be pushing as hard as we can to get ourselves up the grid here. It's a track that I actually enjoy, but in terms of pace through practice, kind of struggled a little bit. And I'm going to show you my full qualifying lap here in Q1, breaking about... 75 meters before turn one and trying to keep it tight to the inside curb a little bit of oversteer on the exit and we go through turn two and through turn three just smashing it down to fifth gear and throwing it through trying to use the banking to slow us down through turn four and then coming out and uh, with using the banking to keep that traction under the vehicle and coming up to the very very fast right hander here and it's just a lift in qualifying, keeping it in seventh gear and using all of the available track width and keeping as much speed and momentum as possible through these next few corners. It's very, very hard to uh, hit the apex on that second right-hander in this Williams. You just get tons of understeer and the same story here in uh, the start of sec well, the end of sector two, that last left-hander. It's, it's a corner where the other drivers really gained on us through qualifying. Sector 2 was probably our, our weakest sector. Sector 3 wasn't actually too bad for us because I was able to break fairly late into that chicane, get a good exit, and then it's just the last corner. It's all about the line through this last corner and maintaining as much speed as you can round the banking that was uh, made specifically for Formula 1 this year. And we're going to come up and cross the line with a 1 minute 11.4 and that is only good enough for 20th position. Just two tenths slower than our teammate George Russell and one of the first times he has outqualified us this season. So we're going to have to push. Like I said, you can see from qualifying our pace is not great. So we are going to have to push extremely hard in this Dutch Grand Prix if we want to make any inroads to the other drivers. But it is time now for the race. It was 35 years ago that the late great Nicky Lauda took his 25th and final Grand Prix win here at Zandvoort. He came from 10th on the grid to beat his McLaren teammate Alain Prost by just two tenths of a second. Well, Zandvoort is a very different circuit today, of course, but still one with an incredible legacy. And we're going to add to that. Welcome along to the 2020 Dutch Grand Prix. Four lefts and 10 rights make up the 14 corners of the narrow and demanding Zandvoort circuit, with plenty of peaks and valleys over the course of a 2.6 mile lap, which will demand absolute concentration from our drivers here today. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Why don't we start by talking about Valtteri Bottas? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Max Verstappen and Perez, Albon, Ricardo, Sainz and Lance Stroll, Gasly, Norris, Esteban Ocon and Raikkonen, Fiat, 
Magnussen, Antonio Giovinazzi, and George Russell, the engineer, and Romain Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Here we are then on the grid for the 2020 Dutch Grand Prix at Circuit Zandvoort. And like I said, a track that I really enjoy, especially from other simulators. Uh, back when I was at university, actually, this was one of my favourite tracks on the full motion simulator we had in, uh, in the Coventry University lab. And it's just a fantastic track. Uh, obviously, it's a bit different now for Formula One with the banked turns uh, being added in. And um, yeah, it's just it, it was a track that I really would have loved to see in real life to see if the racing would be very good. It's quite a short circuit and it's relatively narrow, actually. Um, so whether the overtaking would be uh, rife in real life, I'm not sure. But we'll have to wait and see till next year. But here we go then for the Dutch Grand Prix. It is five lights. It's lights out and away we go and we don't get a very good start here. You can see Russell and the pack ahead making uh, a bit of a gap to us and Grosjean who had a grid penalty making his way past but into turn one we go round the outside of a ton of cars here and we're at the moment in P15 just ahead of Giovinazzi but he goes back up the inside towards turn three and uh, he's actually, uh, we managed to hold it round the outside. He shoots round the outside of us into turn four and he has a fantastic exit takes a lot of curve but he still has the traction to keep ahead and we get past Dan Kvyat there as well and that puts us up into P15 but you can see the cars behind on the medium tyres obviously don't have the grip through those first few corners of the lap and that's where we gained and we managed to grab P15 so just Antonio Giovinazzi ahead in his Alfa Romeo car and then Esteban Ocon ahead of him the cars ahead of um, Giovinazzi probably not the sort of cars we're going to be fast enough to challenge at this race Okay, that's a solid start, mate. Let's try and stick with Giovinazzi now. So I genuinely think if we can stick with Giovinazzi and have good pace here, and we're right on the back of him now, then we could have a good chance here of, you know, getting another good result, getting in that top 15. That's really the goal for us in these first few races of the season until we develop the car further is top 15 and Ocon going very very slowly through the final corner he goes into the pit lane and we are side by side almost with Giovinazzi but you can see in terms of straight line speed we just can't match the Alfa Romeo into turn one we break much later than Giovinazzi and we go for a very very aggressive move up the inside kind of forcing our way through there and a bit of contact with the side of the tyres of Giovinazzi's car against our side pod luckily no damage done and we are up into P13 I believe Ocon actually had front wing damage from turn one at the start of this race and that is why he went into the pits at the end of lap one and now coming on to the start of lap 12 we've got Danny Kvyat right behind in his Alpha Tauri car and into turn one he's not quite going to have enough speed to get past and you can see that is uh, Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo coming out of the pit lane and we just about managed to get out in front of them and that is great news for us not so good news for them because now they're stuck in the middle of a massive uh, train of cars that we are heading up and uh, they're not going to be too happy with the team for putting them out in that traffic, but it's good for us. Looking at uh, about lap 13, 14 now, and you can see Danny Kvyat absolutely throwing it up the inside of that left-hander and forcing his way through on us. And he's got the DRS, so we're not going to be close enough to challenge him into the chicane. We slot in behind the Alpha Tauri car, and we are going to come in for our pit stop. This is when the soft tyres really started to let go now, and you can see Carlos Sainz right on our rear end in with his uh, new hard tyres on board, and he's going to have plenty of grip with those brand new tyres on, and we opt to go into the pit lane on this lap. Then let's see if the team can do us good here and get us out in a nice position. I think we will be coming out at the back of the pack, hopefully ahead of the two cars following us into the pit lane, though, of Antonio Giovinazzi and Roman Grosjean. So we're into the pit box then, and let's see what comes off. And it's another smooth pit stop from the Williams team, so we can't complain with that one. And we come out on the hard tyres, just going for the one stop this time, and hopefully we can make those last to the end quite nicely. And that is Esteban Ocon just ahead in his Renault car going through turn three now. And hopefully we can have the pace to kind of stick with his pace. We, I don't expect to be able to close the gap on the Renault, but hopefully we've got the pace to at least stick with him. Now we're looking at Valtteri Bottas quite a lot later in this second stint, coming through the final sector of this track, and you can see he's slowed down dramatically through that left-hander, almost has contact with the wall, and he's going very, very slowly, and it's another mechanical failure for Valtteri Bottas. Absolutely heartbreaking for him. It's, he's really losing touch in this championship already, just through just through bad luck and mechanical failures that he's had so far this season. It's good for us, though, because that puts us up into P13. After a few cars pit and we gain positions, now we gain the position on Bottas, which is very, very good news for us. 
Okay, we're sat P13. Your pace is good. We are racing Raikkonen behind, so defend as well as you can. Okay, so we've got about 11 laps left of this race, and we've got Kimi Raikkonen about half a second behind, and we are battling him for position. So we need to fight that as hard as we can to stay in the position that we're currently sat. Now we're looking at Carlos Sainz going very, very slowly through the final corner of this lap, and that is absolutely terrible luck for Carlos Sainz. He's had a mechanical failure as well as Valtteri Bottas in this race and he's going very very slowly down the pit straight. I'm not sure why he didn't opt to go into the pits um, but he's actually going to keep going and eventually he does park at the side of turn one. Again I don't know why he, went in, why he didn't go into the pit lane because he's risked a virtual or full safety car being released. Luckily neither was released but Carlos Sainz then off into the runoff at the end of turn one and he parks up next to an access road and uh, he's out of this race. So heartbreaking for the McLaren team and for Carlos Sainz. But there we go then. Uh, we gain the position on Carlos Sainz and that promotes us to P12. So far that is going to be matching our best ever finish of this career mode if we can finish in P12. And there's only uh, well seven laps left of this race, including the lap that we're currently on. And Raikkonen still within half a second of ourselves as we come out of turn four. Now, lap 34, you can see we've got Kimi Raikkonen right up behind us within two tenths of a second as we go into the chicane at the end of the lap. And he is definitely within striking distance down the pit straight if he is close enough. But you could see on the mini-map, that was Lewis Hamilton closing right up to the back of us. There he is on the replay camera. And we're going to be watching this full lap as we defend from Kimi Raikkonen. He tries to go around the outside through turn one. We hold the inside line and we squeeze him to the outside of the circuit on the exit of turn one. We're still on his inside as we go towards turn three and we sweep through to carry on defending our position in this race. Lewis Hamilton closing right up to Kimi Raikkonen and Raikkonen opting to get out of his way as quickly as possible. We're going to wait a bit later in the lap if we can, but he is closing at a race of knots here in the Dutch Grand Prix. Fast through the fast right-hander then and we can still see a little bit of a gap to Lewis Hamilton not quite having to move out the way just yet but then through the next right-hander we leave the gap on the inside I don't think Lewis Hamilton was quite expecting us to leave the gap there and he pulls up alongside us so side by side with Lewis Hamilton for the first time in this career mode not quite for position but still nevertheless quite exciting to be side by side with a Mercedes at some point through this first season but that puts Kimi Raikkonen right onto the back of our car as we come through the chicane for the last time in this Grand Prix since we've been lapped now by the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen he's only got one more corner or two technically but one sort of sweeping right hander uh, to get past us if he has a good run onto the pit straight he's very very close in the slipstream we're going to use all of our remaining overtake mode and the DRS uh, that we got on Lewis Hamilton towards the line and we just about hold P12 that's P12 fantastic drive mate your pace was consistent and quick let's keep this up going into Spain doubted whether they could pull off the win here in Zandvoort, but they have done, and done it in spectacular style. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. Well, we had to race hard for it, but we did manage to grab P12, and it's a fantastic position for us to finish in, matching our best finish of the season. And again, we're so close to that top 10, just don't quite have the pace to do it. You can see we were quite quite a way off Lando Norris, who finished in 10th position, so we do need a little bit more luck and maybe a couple more uh, retirements if we want to finish in the points before our car is ready to actually fight on pure pace for points in this championship. 
But George Russell grabs 18th. He did. He was the last finisher of the cars that did finish this race, unfortunately. Lewis Hamilton still leading this championship by 29 points from Max Verstappen. And obviously Bottas not picking up any points from today's race. He's sitting on 69, 42 points behind his teammate. Uh, we're just behind Danny Kvyat, sitting 15th with no points on the board still, and our teammate George Russell at the back of the pack. But Williams still sat in 8th place in the Constructors. I'm sure they'll be pretty happy with that. They're going to be hoping that Alfa Romeo and Haas don't score points in any of the, any of the races to come. Um, but overall, I'm pretty sure they're going to be fairly happy with how we're performing so far this season and another strong performance for us here and showing our defensive skills against the experienced driver of Kimi Raikkonen in the Dutch Grand Prix. But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope you're looking forward to the episodes to come. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.